Uh, tonight we'll be discussing how to use the Freedom of Information Act effectively against the feds. Now, the Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA, was signed into law on July 4th, 1966 by President Johnson. The Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA, was strengthened by Congress in 1974 as a result of the Watergate scandal and as a result of uh, court decisions that, was, uh, that were interpreting the Freedom of Information Act. In 1986, thanks to the uh, Reagan administration, Congress amended FOIA and as part of a drug reform package, the law was actually weakened. Now, the amendments to FOIA in 1986 made it easier for the feds to withhold information from the uh, American public. In spite of the efforts by Congress and the courts to uh, make information more difficult to obtain under the Freedom of Information Act, I believe it remains an important tool that is underutilized by journalists and activists alike. Now, how does FOIA work? Anyone can make a FOIA request. You do not have to be a U.S. citizen. You do not have to be a lawyer or journalist to make use of FOIA. No special forms or legal skills are required in order to make a FOIA request. You might wonder what records are available under the Freedom of Information Act. Records regarding yourself, events, corporations, deceased individuals, public figures such as politicians and celebrities are available. You cannot, however, request records concerning a third party unless you provide an agency with a privacy waiver form from the individual you are seeking records about. Now, how long does it take to receive records under FOIA? Under the Freedom of Information Act, an agency has 20 working days to provide the sought after material. An agency can take additional time under what they call unusual circumstances. The reality is, based on my years of experience, that it often takes an agency months, sometimes years, to release requested material. You may wonder, how do I know where to send my FOIA request? All federal agencies maintain websites and these websites have FOIA reading rooms or FOIA sections. And these sections of the various websites list the addresses uh, to which requests should be directed. Now, you may send your request under the Freedom of Information Act electronically. I, however, prefer using regular first-class mail. I think emails are far too casual. And if you end up litigating the matter, it's difficult, at least it is for me, to keep track of a, a, a stream of emails. So send a letter via first class mail, keep photocopies for your records. This way you'll know when you sent the request and you'll have the written acknowledgements from the uh, federal agencies. Now you may wonder, can an agency withhold records under FOIA? Yes, they can. Under FOIA, there are various exemptions. There's an exemption for national security material. There's a law enforcement exemption. For example, an agency does not have to disclose records that would re reveal the identity of a confidential source. Now the exemptions are permissive, not mandatory. In other words, an agency is not obligated to withhold records or portions thereof simply because the material falls within one or more FOIA exemptions. Here's some specific FOIA exemptions. Uh, 
FOIA does not apply, and the exemption is a B1 exemption, that's a national security exemption. And I'll just read from the statute, B1 specific, uh, it's material specifically authorized under criteria established by an executive order to be kept secret in the interest of national security or foreign policy. Now, there's also the law enforcement exemption, the B7 exemption, and the B7 has various subparts. Now, B7D uh, relates to confidential sources. Now, the uh, statute specifically states that an agency does not have to reveal information which could reasonably be expected to disclose the identity of a confidential source, including a state, local, or foreign agency, or authority, or any private institution which furnished information on a confidential basis, and in the case of a record or information compiled by a law enforcement authority in the course of a criminal investigation or by an agency conducting a lawful national security intelligence investigation, information furnished by a confidential source. Now the term confidential source is very broadly defined and Congress basically codified what the courts had interpreted B7D to mean. Uh, most people think of a confidential source as an informant or an individual, but the courts and now the statute have broadly interpreted that to include local law enforcement agencies and corporations such as a telephone company or bank. Now there's a section, and this was actually passed as part of the drug reform package that I, I spoke about earlier. In 1986, the uh, Congress put in Section C1 of the Freedom of Information Act. And what that allows an agency to do is uh, tell a requester that they found no records responsive to your request when in fact there may be a full-blown investigation going on. And what the Congress did with this provision of the uh, law is codify a deci court decision that was the Glomar decision, but it's where the, an agency can either confirm or deny records exist. So if an agency, if you make a request, there's an ongoing investigation and the agency has reason to believe you're unaware of the investigation, they can write back and say they have no file or records on you when in fact they have this voluminous dossier. This provision uh, unfortunately was passed by Congress and uh, there's been no move to uh, repeal this section. So in spite of these exemptions, in spite of that C1 provision of FOIA, it's important not to lose sight of the fact that disclosure, not secrecy, is the dominant feature of FOIA. And it should also be noted that FOIA exemptions cannot be used to shield or hide illegal investigative tactics. If K in fact, there was a case, Cantor versus Internal Revenue Service, where the court specifically stated, FOIA does not shield materials relating to unauthorized or illegal investigative tactics. Uh, that's also the law here in New York, or the Second Circuit, the, which is the United States Court of Appeals. Now, what if you're... Uh, in need of the records in a expedient manner. What can you do if the agency is taking too much time and you need the records promptly? Under FOIA, you could treat the lack uh, of a response or the failure to respond as a denial and you could file an administrative appeal. Now, how long does an agency have to respond to an administrative appeal? In theory, an agency is supposed to respond to an appeal within 20 working days. Unfortunately, some agencies take months, even years, to act on a FOIA appeal.
appeal. My recent experience, I would note, they've gotten a little prompter, especially at the Department of Justice. Now, what can happen once you file an administrative appeal? The agency can affirm the decision to withhold the records. They can um, direct that some or all of the uh, records be released. So they can either affirm the decision to withhold or they can direct that some or all of the sought after material be released in response to your initial FOIA request. Now what can you do if you file your request, you file your appeal, and the agency hasn't responded in a timely manner? Or say your request or appeal is denied in its entirety or in part. Under the Freedom of Information Act, you can file a lawsuit in the United States District Court. You can file in one of three places. You can file in the District of Columbia, where most FOIA suits are brought. You can bring a case in the district where you reside, or you can bring a lawsuit where the records are located. Now, what can you do if you don't have the time, energy, or resources to bring a lawsuit. Now in 2007, Congress created the Office of Government Information Services, OGIS, and that's a component of the National Archives and Records Administration. Administ that's a component of the National Archives and Records Administration, NARA, and OGIS reviews agency compliance under FOIA. So um, that's a tool, that's a, a fairly new tool that's available to FOIA requesters. Uh, you can reach uh, OGIS as a website. Uh, they have a toll-free number, 877-684-6448. They're located in the Washington, D.C. area in College Park, Maryland. They're number there is area code 202-741-5770. Their email is ogis at nara, N-A-R-A dot gov. And they do have a website. If you just type in OGIS, National Archives and Records Administration, you can get more information regarding this agency. Now, in addition to the OGIS, you can also seek help from your elected representatives in the U.S. Senate, as well as the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, what you can do is you can make your request and or administrative appeal. You could send copies to your elected representatives and ask if they would contact the agency on your behalf, seeing if they would expedite or assist in expediting the processing of your request. All federal agencies have liaisons with Congress and they will respond if they get a congressional inquiry. So uh, these representatives have to, in the House have to run every two years. They have a slew of staffers and interns who are just looking for something to do. So why not put them to work helping uh, speed up your FOIA request? 